go. Hello, welcome to Geeks Assembled. I'm Susie and uh, Susie Foreman, and I've been on tour with my grandfather and um, naming the TARDIS. And we we were listening to to uh, the Magic Mouse Trap, and I wonder why. Hmm. Because of uh, the toy maker, maybe. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's a uh, my Scrabble said uh, my Scrabble tiles say Tardis, so that's what I got here. And uh, Magic Mouse Trap, Seventh Doctor, Ace and Hex. Oh my gosh, Hex! Yeah, Hex. Okay, Hex is cute. Anyway. So is Ace, but we're just going to go with the fact that X is cute too. Anyway, I love the, uh, and, and the Seventh Doctor is adorable. He is. And <laughs> this time he's taking on the toy maker who is just so, so like uh, menacing. He's just, he's just menacing. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, the first Doctor episode again, again, because of like what, I mean, because of where they're, they're he's, all these games are going on, like in a mental institution, what do they call them, a sanatorium or something like that. Sweet, uh, Switzerland. Anyway, um, because Lee is here, uh, I would like to hear his opening thoughts on the magic mousetrap. So Doctor Ace and Hex. Well, uh, <laughs> it was good to, um, sit down and listen to this again it's been a few years since i um heard this mm -hmm. um and it gets me every time well the first time i heard this because there's nowhere on here where it says toy maker i know right but apart from the small print on the back there where it says copyright toy maker but people don't read that uh -huh. <laughs> toy maker created by so and so but, right, right. Um, so it was a great surprise. Such a surprise! Oh my gosh! As when the timer, it was the toy maker. Um, but to go back to the the beginning of the audio set, you, you just you're straight into it. You, you're yeah. They're always they're already mid adventure, or you know something's gone on. Because the doctor's in a cable car in Switzerland, going up a mountain. Halfway. Um, yeah, halfway uh, with memory loss. Uh, he doesn't know okay, how he got. Doctor there. wasn't the only one who had it. Go on. Yeah, um, we have Hasten X, um, us pretending to be other people. Uh -huh. uh, you've got the people in the sanatorium. Um, just playing games and Scrabble, Scrabble, and oh, having, a little, <laughs> having a little. Um, they had I and S, and what is it? What, is, what did he add to it? <laughs> well, uh, it, it is a it is a crazy beginning to this story because uh, you, you you're straight in and you think, what's going on? Um. And then, you know, it all comes to, you know, the doctors starts to remember things, comes starts to realise things, and then all of a sudden he gets chloroformed. And, <laughs> and he's, he's out again. Um, yeah. But then you find uh, Ace and Hex are doing this to help the doctor um, behind the scenes. Yeah. Um. Which you're thinking, which is a bit confusing. <laughs> what what's going on? Um, but everything is revealed as it goes along, and it's it's and you've got some weird weird characters here. Um, let's have a look. At some of the names here. Um, you've got Queenie Glasscock. Uh, what a name! What a name! You've got to be careful with that, haven't you? Um, <laughs> You've got um, Swapnil Khan. Yep. 
Ludovic Comfort, Lola Luna. Um, all these people are in the um, sanatorium, you know, as you say, playing games, Scrabble, having little musical interludes. Um, but it's, it's a great... Um, it's a great story. Uh, uh, who was it? Matthew Sweet who wrote this. Um, it's just, <coughs> it's like you've entered Wonderland. Yeah. <coughs> and then you, you start to put things together, and you're thinking, "Is it? No, it can't be. You no, know, it's it's not. Is it?" But then you start thinking, "Oh, all these games, what are going on?" And then you, you know, you think, "Yeah, it must be." And then all of a sudden. He opens the box and there's this dum this dummy who sort of starts talking <laughs> with uh, with um, Ludovic's voice. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's a great it's a great story, um, it, and it, it suits the Seventh Doctor, mm -hmm. you know, because of the way he used to manipulate. Uh, you know, I mean, I mean. The, the toy maker manipulates, so they're they're as bad as each other, but this suits the doctor's e the seventh doctor's era right down to a T. Yeah, I couldn't see any other doctor because when I was, you know, you you've got Sylvester's voice and this, but I couldn't imagine anybody any of the other doctors doing this audio, only the seventh. Uh, the, what you said, yeah, 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 true. I couldn't. I couldn't imagine. Yeah, I couldn't imagine uh, Tom Baker doing this one or John Perley? No way. No, no, no. It's straight down. It's got to be. It's the seventh Doctor. I mean, there, there it could have been the second Doctor for a second here and there, but yeah, the seventh Doctor is absolutely perfect for it. Yeah, but but the second Doctor's not very manipulative. No. <laughs> But yeah, I, uh, it was it was really nice to um, listen to this again. I mean, when did this come out? Two thousand and six, two thousand and nine. Uh, it's been it's been a few years since I heard this one, so it was good to uh, sit for all the four episodes of this. Yeah. So, well, back to you, Susan. All right. So, um, yeah, I, it was. It was great that Hexa and Ace were were working behind the scenes. It, that was that was cool. It was it was you could you could you know you could see how creative they were and how how much the the doctor the professor had invested you know confidence invested in them and that was great you know. Any of the companions sure do get empowered by the doctor. That's just one of those amazing things. And this story, this huge epic tale that we're watching, is that the people who travel with the doctor become sort of huge in the in the universe. Anyway, and so <laughs> the piece, the other thing was is uh. You you know you figured out that 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 the toy that the games that the, were being played, um, that was the reason for the amnesia because you didn't want the, the doctor didn't want to remember what he was up to until mm -hmm. it was actually in the in the place where he had cornered the toy maker and uh, was able to compress put him in the box you know mm -hmm. and um. And so that was, uh, I mean, that was that was actually like very very much like the master, like Angley Master was the whole was the whole streaking people down and putting them in boxes and stuff. And oops, sorry about that. And then the uh, then there was like the whole. Uh, the whole craziness with with Queenie and that that was uh, like um like they're just they're watching the cable car and they 
they have their, uh, you know, Snapnail. I mean, even the name Snapnail. I mean, like that, that was that was fun because Swamp. I mean, Swampnail because that was fun because the 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 names of these characters were great, like you were saying, and um, the Randall, like those guys, Herbert and Harry. Yeah, and then uh, and. Shock treatment. I mean, it's like it's like a zany version of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I mean, you know, yeah, it <coughs> yeah. really is. Except for like, there's a, like all these games going on, and that was that was that was really fun and interesting and. Uh, and I I really loved the 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 I loved it that that the I loved it that the that the toy maker was uh was was pretty convinced that the doctor would would uh would be he he would get his revenge on the doctor like that was basically what it was and then and and so now like from now on i mean i i, I bet every single episode every single time that the, the the doctor sees the toy maker he will end up uh you know trying to um trying to escape the revenge tactics you know that that this sets it up you know, yeah. the sets of like, like uh, the other ones too. The other, uh, the other uh, audios and, and and I guess this this new Doctor Who episode that was dropped yesterday, um, and that was really um interesting. And so, yeah, that revenge game was really 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 big and uh and you know this the, in this one it was like it was like the the accusing you of cheating had had so many ramifications yeah. i mean i mean like that was that was uh that was really brutal and like that's that, that's really the jeopardy of this it's like you know not playing by the rules and then the doctor doesn't but um anyway it's uh it's really good good audio and and it, and it's and it just flies by i mean it's super fast and it's like um and it's uh and you know william hartnell uh had was having trouble by the time that he was he was doing this uh the first one, the 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 connect the 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 prequel of this, and so, um, you know, he he did his voiceovers, but he was MIA. So you know, the toy maker, excuse me, the toy maker made him invisible, and you know, it worked. It worked that way really well. Yeah. Yeah, it did. Yeah, and um, but the the you know the first doctor was not uh was he wasn't I mean there was no there was no uh he had no qualms about you know making things easier for himself a a, a shortcut. Yeah. He, he he did have to say to the toy maker, "Listen, I didn't cheat. You know, you just gave me those extra ones when you took your own steps. You took, you gave me the extra one. So anyway, fantastic, and it's just been fun. It's been a fun weekend listening to all these game theory. And I'm not really good at game theory. I mean, I know a lot of a lot of nerdy people are are incredibly good at game theory." 
it's not me at all. And so I was really, I was really intrigued what, what this, this audio would sound like. And so, uh, uh, yeah, so um, anything you, you really liked, just tell me what were your favorite bits or you? Well, Big Finish have used um, the toy maker sparingly. In, yeah. in in the audios, as far as I know, there's only been three. One was the lost story, the nightmare fair, and that uh, was the sixth doctor, right? Sixth doctor, that was intended to be the season that got cancelled. What was that like, twenty three or twenty three B or something? Yeah, it, it was. It was the season what got cancelled, and they made the trail of the town lord instead. Oh, um, it's twenty three A. Yeah. Yeah, um, and then there was there's a companion chronicle as well with the toy maker um, called Solitaire, oh. with with um, Charlie, Charlie oh. Pollan. Oh yeah. And, and then then there's this one that that's the only three I know about, um, and this is the audio, full audio drama. The other one was say was made from a script for a TV and the other one is a companion chronicle. Um but I like I like the I like the weird characters, you know. And then you found out these people have got parts of the toy maker in them. Um is it um is it Lola Luna who's got some pipe sticking out of her chest and every time she speaks she sort of whistles. Um, <laughs> but she she likes to sing. <laughs> Which, uh, and, and you've got a great uh, actor in here as Nadim Swale, um, playing um, Swapnil Khan, the you know the chess the chess player. Um, you know, famous family of act acting family there. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, been absolutely fabulous. Yeah, yeah. Um, so great, great, great actors in this. Um, and you, you say with with, with McCoy, he's, he's he's in his element when he's playing the Seventh Doctor, isn't he? Yes, yes, very much. He, he really is. I think he he loves. I mean, okay, yeah, he's not getting any younger. Um, as long as these people. Are, at a certain age, can sit down and just do their lens down a microphone, get them to record stuff. Yeah. I'm sure they'll carry on doing it. Yeah. And we look at look at, look at Tom Baker. God, he got his, his 90 next year. He's recorded so much. And so it's advance. like William Russell and yeah. Yeah, he's recorded so much in advance with Big Finish. It, they've got another, I would say, five years worth of material. <laughs> Even when he won't be here, you know what I mean. Um, and he's carrying on the coding, and I think this is what Colin Baker and Sylvester are, are going to plan to do because they're in their eighties now. There's a BBC, uh, a recent BBC uh, Christmas Carol that that on audio that was released with Tom Baker reading it. Yeah, yeah, that's from a few years ago. Yeah, it's just reading it though. Yeah. Uh, it's not a full cast, but anyway. So, yeah. But the other, it, did you, did you, uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just saying, it was just, I just like the, the, the wacky, the, the wacky characters, um, set in a sort of, uh, a macabre place, really. It's, it's in, you know, it's a sort of an asylum, isn't it? You know, it, it you know, you, you get the eeriness and the seriousness of the place. I mean, shock treatment. Shock treatment and everything like that. But you get these weird and wonderful characters, uh, which is, you know, it's, it's chalk and cheese. <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, it was a. A nice listen. I know 
I listened to the, you know, the the interviews on this, on this uh, story with some of the production and the actors and stuff, and they did say the original draft of this included Agatha Christie. Oh yeah. Um. I, was, I heard you know, that too somewhere. I don't know where, yeah. but yeah. It, it, it was, it's, you know, at the end of the thing, the, the talk of talk to some of the actors, and I'm sure it was Matthew Sweet who wrote it, said the original script did have Agatha Christie in this when she disappeared back, in, you know, in the day. Um, but a TV series put a stop to that, a certain series called Doctor Who. <laughs> <'Cause>, yeah. <laughs> Because Agatha Christie appeared in an episode on TV around about the same time this was getting written. <laughs> so they had to sort of remove that element of the story. Oh, it was, it was it. It was the unicorn and the wasp was just before. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was on TV just before this. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And uh, so they had to sort of remove all the Agatha Christie elements from it. Um, but it, it still works. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who's to say Agatha Christie might turn up in another story? You never know. Yeah. That would be cool. And the... Uh, yeah, the the thing that was... Um, was... Uh, Interesting was that it was like um, it was set in Switzerland, and then you hear that in this in this adventure that, that aired on TV yesterday, he's got a, a Swiss or German accent, so that was yeah yeah. To yeah. see that, that was sort of contiguous to as a prequel to that, or this was. Um, well, this this is set in 1926. Yeah. The, the the TV thing yesterday, in when the was event in the TV was 1925. So I didn't. Oh, but so still, it's Tommy Wimey. <laughs> still, I mean, he was he was right there, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's yeah, for real. <laughs> and that's why he was in all these places and put in a box. Oh my gosh, yes, absolutely so many things. And um yeah. I really liked the the fact that it was um what was I gonna say? I just had this awesome thing I, I was thinking of, but it's gone. Oh. But the, the beautiful thing was like like um like uh ace and hex and stuff helping the, the doctor remember who you he, he was. And then you know, oh that's right. And then this sort of acts as a pre prequel to all of the the amnesia that the eighth doctor experiences. I mean, if there is one doctor who can't who has CRS can't remember <laughs> stuff, that would be the eighth doctor. And the seventh doctor, through through creating this amnesia state, probably set something up that, that it's just really hard to get over a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I meant to say, and like, and I was just noticing that 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 yes, he was doing that as part of gamesmanship, but also part of it. it as as these things are sort of able to be tied together uh, in no small way, you know. Um, yeah, that that ended up being what happened with, you know, McGann's doctor all the time. Mm -hmm. I think like I think he was he had an amnesia like ten or twelve audios or something like that. He had it was so many. It was so many. Oh my gosh. He started he started the, the in the movie, but then he was like all in 
it was all happening all over again and over again and over again. So this was a good this was a good lead into that. Anyway. Cool, yeah. I agree with you there. It's, uh, yeah, it's just weird and creepy and marvelous. Four crosses? I mean, where did where where did uh, J.K. Rowling get her ideas for car crosses? I mean, this is it, you know. All right, maybe <laughs> that came out before this. Well, um, uh, we're not we're not going down the libel route. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I enjoyed it anyway. It's it's good to sit uh, sit down and listen to some well written, well acted drama. Mm-hmm. Yep. This was one of them. Yeah, agreed. And uh, so, what would you what would you rate this out of ten, Lee, my friend? Um. Oh dear me. Uh. Just for the wackiness of it, uh, and the original use of the toy maker, um, it's got to be ten. It's got to be ten Scrabble tiles out of ten. Yeah, I'll give this ten electro shock, electro convulsive therapy <laughs> uh, out of ten. I mean, it was like. There was some brutal brutality to it, and it was, and yeah, no wonder people were losing their dang minds, right? Am I right? Too right, yeah. And uh, and yeah, I was uh, I was just thinking a lot about the Merry Pranksters and Ken Kesey, and and boom, we're we're listening to to uh. An audio adventure that's kind of like set in a similar place to his one flew over the cuckoo's nest, you know. I was that was that was pretty much kismet too. Very interesting how that all fit together. Anyway, um, thanks for watching our podcast. Please do like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. And, and then the other thing that we want you to do is we want you to uh, join us on our social media. We're on yeah. Facebook. We got a Facebook group that's really good that's got 666 members. <laughs> the neighbor of the bees, too. And then uh, we have, uh, we have, we've got X and on Instagram and Tumblr and uh, the only thing we don't have is a Discord server because we're not we're not quite there yet. And um, but when we do, we'll sure to, we'll be sure to invite you all because you're you're important to us. And that that would be a way for us to communicate and hang out and stuff. And maybe then you know you get get more into what we're doing because we. We'd love to, we'd love to suck you into this this vortex of fun and <laughs> frivolity that we share. Ooh, it's definitely a vortex. That's definitely a vortex, right? And then um, another thing is, uh, please do share this video widely and join us if you would. Um, if mm. if we if. We, you feel like doing stuff before we set up a Discord, why don't you just join us on these? Get in touch with Lee. You know. Yeah. Leave a leave a comment below or or you know. Wherever you found Facebook. this video. Yeah. Wherever you wherever you see notice notifications about this. Uh that's it for us. Have a great time and uh you know, if you're playing games, you better follow the rules. That's all I gotta say. Don't be. I love games. I love a games night. There it, yeah, games night. Mm. 